Olsen would be referred to as the third Olsen twin as she grew up alongside her world famous sisters Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. <laughs> Before Elizabeth Olsen would begin her career off Broadway and eventually make her breakthrough into films, thanks in large part to her performance in Martha Marcy May Marlene. Yeah. I felt like really uneasy. We want people to feel really sick while they're watching. Brilliant. <laughs> You give a little sick bags we don't, out, we don't. We want them to feel on edge though, I know that. Yeah. I think that. That's what I want them to feel. Before Elizabeth Olsen would join the Marvel Universe as the Scarlet Witch in Avengers Age of Ultron and eventually go on to start in her own spin-off series, WandaVision. You, can you say anything? Can you tell us anything that hasn't already uh, been revealed? No. No, okay. I mean, you know that, but I think I can say it's uh, Wanda and Vision living their suburban sitcom dreams. Elizabeth Olsen may have grown up in her older sister's shadow, but these days she's not only her own woman, she's arguably the most famous and popular Olsen sister in the world. They would rope you into a couple. Yeah, it was and like after school care. I remember like, I know it, I've seen it. But like the actual experience of doing it, I don't remember so much. After getting her start in cameo roles in Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen films, Elizabeth would consider doing other things with her life before getting bit by the acting bug once again in her college years. Rising up the ranks of the independent film circuit, Elizabeth would eventually land in some of the biggest pictures in the world, including Godzilla in 2014, and her first appearance in the Marvel Universe came the following year in Age of Ultron. That type of success is a far cry away from where she was early on in her life when she considered changing her name to distance herself from her famous siblings. She told The Sun, I couldn't walk into a room without everyone already having an opinion. The thing about nepotism is the fear that you don't earn or deserve the work. There was even a part of me when I was a little girl that thought if I'm gonna be an actress, I'm gonna go by Elizabeth Chase, which is my middle name. But when she started working, Elizabeth's love for her family wouldn't let her carry through with her earlier plans after she realized that sharing her last name with her sisters was nothing to be ashamed about. How's it going everyone? It's your girl Kara the Vampire Slayer and since Elizabeth Olsen is super low-key and private, we're bringing you her before they were famous bio instead of her house tour. We usually do videos like this on our main channel, so they're much more over there if you want to check it out. Today we're taking a look at everyone's favorite superheroine, Wanda Maximoff, aka Elizabeth Olsen. WandaVision is currently one of the most popular shows, so with Elizabeth's visibility at an all-time high, what better time than now to take a look back at her life story. As always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat, and now let's get into this video. born on February 16, 1989 in Sherman Oaks, California, and is the third daughter of David Olson, a real estate developer and mortgage banker, as well as Jeanette Olson, a personal manager. Her older sisters are, of course, Mary Kate and Ashley Olson, first known for their performance as Michelle Tanner on the family sitcom Full House. And Elizabeth was born two years after they first appeared on that series in 1987. As you might expect with a lineage like that, Elizabeth, whose nickname from early on was Lizzie, began acting from a young age. Before she turned 11, she would appear in her sister's films like How the West Was Fun, Our First Video, and the Straight to Video series The Adventures of Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. And all of these were my favorite ever as a kid. I was a mega fan of the Olsen. After a few kind of words, Set to music, we finally convinced Lizzie to stay behind. This acting career began more like an after school exercise. She would often be hanging out behind the scenes of Full House alongside her brother Trent, and producers would simply stop by and ask her if she wanted to be in a scene that day. Elizabeth was always prepared to jump on camera because as a child, she took ballet and singing lessons. By the time she was in the fourth grade, she had begun to audition for television projects outside of her sister's work. In fact, one of her first auditions was for a role in the 2001 movie Spy Kids. My first first audition, I was very little, so I have very odd memories. It was for Spy Kids. 
and it was to be the daughter in Spy Kids. And I got a call back and they gave me a script. And I just remember like looking at what looked like the Bible to me. And I was like, I'm not reading this. I'm like eight. <laughs> but by the time she was 10, Elizabeth was already contemplating her retirement from the business. She told The Guardian, my parents made me write down a pros and cons list and the cons just piled up. So I figured I'd keep acting as a hobby until I was older because I felt that pressure and that people would say, oh, that's nepotism. I decided that as long as I felt confident and worked hard for it, instead of having it handed to me, no one could take that away from me. I never got any job because of my sisters. After deciding to carry on with acting as a side hobby, Elizabeth almost quit again in 2004 after the media had a week long feeding frenzy over rumors that Mary Kate was anorexic. At the time, Elizabeth was a middle schooler attending Campbell Hall, a private school in Beverly Hills, California, which she attended from kindergarten through grade 12. While there, she surrounded herself with super creative kids whose families were nearly as well off as hers. As an athlete, Elizabeth was exceptional in volleyball and even considered attending college on an athletic scholarship. But it would be a high school teacher who lured her back to acting as she began to study the history of theater and the many different playwrights. In her mind, theater offered a different experience than what she was exposed to growing up. She told Nylon, I just always thought that theater was different from being an actor in Hollywood. It was like this safe place where people aren't harassed. At this time, Mary Kate and Ashley were more or less retiring from the world of acting to focus their career in the fashion world. They had launched a clothing line inspired by their siblings Elizabeth and James, which balanced Elizabeth's uptown sophistication and femininity with their brother James's laid back downtown edge. So as her sisters were stepping out of the spotlight, Elizabeth decided to step into it, enrolling herself at New York University's Tisch School for the Arts. While she was there, other students would come up to her dorm room and knock on the door simply to stare at her, which only made Elizabeth want to prove herself more. She even spent a semester studying in Russia at the Moscow Art Theatre School in 2009. When she returned to New York, she began taking acting gigs at off-Broadway productions and underground art pieces that not a whole lot of people ever got around to seeing. More often than not, Elizabeth was the understudy in these productions, which means she was seldom called upon for duty. Instead, she'd spend performance nights writing school papers on her laptop backstage. Eventually though, a Hollywood agent spotted her name on one of the playbills and reached out. Within a year, she had landed leading roles in five independent movies, one of which was her breakthrough role in Martha Marcy May Marlene. This was in 2011, the same year she graduated from Tisch. Hello? Hi. Martha? Yeah. Where are you? Where have you been? Um, I'm not sure. I'm upstate, I think. That role, in which she plays a woman who escapes from a cult, earned Elizabeth many film critic awards and set her career on the path she's still on today. Following the success of that film, she would go on to appear in other indie films like Liberal Arts and Very Good Girl, before breaking into the mainstream with her role in 2014's Godzilla. And while Elizabeth doesn't regret any of her career choices, she does wish she had taken a little more time at this point in her life to weigh her options. She told Vanity Fair, It just kind of happened quickly. I had to learn how to make work choices. I had to learn how to pick jobs differently. I went through a few years of kind of just doing things because I was so lucky and happy to be offered opportunities. In 2015, she was offered the opportunity to join the Marvel Universe after winning the role of Wanda Maximoff, better known as the Scarlet Witch, in Avengers Age of Ultron. And while her role in that film was relatively small, over the years her character would expand into other films, and after appearing in 2019's Avengers Endgame, the highest grossing movie of all time, her character was spun off into her own series to star alongside Paul Bettany in WandaVision. WandaVision was inspired by a combination of sitcoms from decades past. It's also probably the hottest show going on right now, which is kind of ironic when you consider that Elizabeth was once turned down in a role for a series that used to be at the very top of the mountain of must-watch TV as well, Game of Thrones. That's right, Elizabeth actually auditioned for the role of Daenerys that eventually went to Amelia Clark. And 
after having been asked to deliver lines in both American and British accents. She remembers that audition as a low point in her career. Oh, what I mean, and role I, did you audition for? For Khaleesi. Oh, really? But I also forgot that I auditioned for it. I was, someone asked about like a terrible audition story, a journalist, <laughs> like not a good time to like remember something like that. <laughs> and I was like, I actually really love auditioning. And I, I don't really, can't really think of anything. And I was like, oh. Right, I auditioned for Game of Thrones. From the lowest of lows to the highest of highs, Elizabeth Olsen has seen it all in her life, but something tells me that from this point on, her career is gonna be pretty smooth sailing. As for the rest of the story, well, I think that's a video best saved for another time. After all, this is before they were famous. What did you guys think about Elizabeth's story? Anything in particular surprise you? What's your favorite moment of hers from WandaVision? Let me know down in the comments. If you want some more Elizabeth Olsen, go check out our new channel, Famous Fashion, where I just did a countdown on some of her best outfits. In real life, Elizabeth's style sets her apart whether she's on the red carpet or out running errands, so let's start counting down some of her outfits. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!